Welcome to I Know Jax. I'm Joe Talentino, your host for the evening. If it is evening when you're watching this, nowadays there are so many options to get I Know Jax. You can watch me on TV on Saturdays and Sundays. You can watch this online on my website or on YouTube. One way is not necessarily better than the other. I'm just trying to make sure you have plenty of options to watch. There is no one size fits all here because we believe in individuality. <laughs> and at I Know Jax, we don't have something for everybody like a lot of other places do. I try to add flavor and spice, and not like the other media who are, I'm not gonna mention any names here, stay safely in the middle of the road and are bland and what I'd call politically correct and try to please everyone and not rock the boat. That's not for me. Let's rock that boat, baby. <laughs> I was never good at coloring inside the lines, and I know it's not for you either. That's why you watch I Know Jax, right? <laughs> Over the years, and yes, I've been doing the show for years now, I've met a lot of people who watch the show. And when I started, I wasn't sure how people would like the concept. There aren't that many independently produced local shows out there. There just isn't. Producing a TV show is really not really that much different from other small business. You have to be really good at wearing many hats and keeping a lot of balls in the air at the same time. And I do that a lot. And I often fail. And I think that is something else you have to be good at when you have a business. You fail often, but you get up, you dust yourself off, you try new things, and, well, you rinse and repeat. And over time, your failures are fewer and smaller. And before you know it, you have a well-oiled machine. <laughs> After nearly four years of making this show, Luckily, we are working well as a small business. Well, okay, that's enough small business talk. Let's talk about food. <laughs> How about Cuban food? Now, we didn't go to Cuba or Miami or Tampa. Instead, we went north to Amelia Island to find authentic Cuban food. We have all kinds of different Cuban sandwiches, your Lena Ruth, the Medianoche, the Cuban, just to name a few. Good Wait sandwiches. a minute. <laughs> Tell me about this. I, 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 I thought you there was a Cuban sandwich. Oh, our Cubans come, in, not just the food, but the people come in all shapes and colors. <laughs> Chris is going to show me how to make an authentic Cuban sandwich. I'm going to go ahead and slice that down the middle. I'm going to add some pickles. You don't want to put too many pickles on there because you don't want to take away the flavor of the pork. I'm going to get some tavern ham on there. Okay, you don't want to put too much because the star of the show is the pork. The star is of the show is the, the pork. Uh, to pr prepare the pork. Now, how do you guys do that? We slow cook our pork here. I will put it in at about 10 o'clock at night. Right. Set it to about 220 degrees and let it go all the way till the next morning. Wow. So it'll cook for about 10 hours. And we marinate it in our mojo sauce. For a southerner, barbecue sauce would be the choice here, but Chris says that he uses mojo on everything. So add extra mojo on top of that. That's a huge sandwich. Well, it looks bigger now, but once you press it, <laughs> cool. once you press it, it brings it back Not down to size. Yeah, okay, cool. Basically, it's a panini press, but it's smooth tops. Paninis have the ridges, so that's pretty much the difference between a Cuban and a panini. We're gonna go ahead and let that toast for a few minutes, get the bread nice and crunchy on the outside, melt the cheese a little bit. So that bad boy looks like it's about ready, right? Cheese about ready to go. Make sure our toast, our bread is nice and toasted. Oh my goodness. Now that's a standard Cuban, right? That is a traditional a Cuban sandwich. Tradition. Mm -hmm. And then I've seen a lot of people are coming by to get coffee. I'm not I a coffee drinker myself, but... I can't live without it at least five times a day. Little shots, that's all you need. A shot of coffee. Yeah, a like shot of that. coffee. Yeah. Next we're going to do the midnight sandwich or the medianoche. Uh, the medianoche originated in Tampa. Uh, the old Cuban men working in the cigar factories there. Down in Ybor City. Down yeah. in Ybor okay. City. Yeah. Okay, cool. They wanted a sandwich that would be good for them in the middle of the night, hence right. Medianoche. Medianoche gotcha. translates to middle of the night. Gotcha. The midnight sandwich is the same as a Cuban, but it uses sweet egg bread, almost like Hawaiian bread. Then Chris finishes the midnight in the press. Next, the Elena Ruth. The story is that Elena was a debutante and a very picky eater. <laughs> We're using the sweet egg bread for Elena Ruth too. This is almost like a dessert sandwich. It's a very sweet sandwich, but the saltiness of the turkey 
Gotcha. It gives it that nice balance. It has cream cheese, strawberry jam, and turkey. This one looks huge too, but that's before the press. This is a delicate sandwich, so Chris doesn't press it too hard. The Elena Root. So you got your strawberry jam, your turkey, and your cream cheese on the bottom. You've seen a little bit behind the scenes here at Ola Cuban Cafe. We made a Cuban sandwich, and Chris brought out some ham croquetas and Marisol's grandmother's recipe of black bean soup. And of course, we've got Cuban coffee and this soda that's like a Cuban root beer. See you guys at Ola. My wife loved the coffee they have at Ola Cafe, but honestly, I don't drink coffee yet. I have to say that because there was a time not that long ago when I would say, I don't drink beer. And when you see me now, you think I've been a craft beer drinker my whole life. Now I became an avid craft beer drinker during my time here at I Know Jack's. So it's a pretty recent change for me. See, you can teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe I'll start drinking coffee too. Another place you can get great Cuban sandwiches and coffee is of course Tampa. We recently visited Tampa for a road trip, but we didn't have Cuban food on the agenda even though we visited Ybor City. Today I'm down in Ybor City with Jason, restaurateur extraordinaire. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, I, I just want to find out, like, first of all, how do you have the energy to do four restaurants, man? I'm a busy guy. I, I operate <laughs> them like they're all one big restaurant and there's just different dining rooms. <laughs> I got so I, I, I make my uh, my route. <laughs> so, uh, I, you know, I have to look at your pedometer, man. How many how many miles do you put in on the lap? Between 12 and 14 miles a day. I figured it yeah, had to I, be pretty I, high. We have, uh, I have wear the Fitbit. And, do you uh, really? I do. So, so normally you would be 300 pounds, I'm but so, otherwise. <laughs> with the way I consume, I would be more. Than <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, give me a little bit of a, a history on this. How did you get started? Well, I'm, I'm an Ybor City native, and uh, I started working at the Columbia restaurant uh, right down the street. Yeah. They were my neighbors, and I started vacuuming their pool. I, uh, <laughs> I worked for Adela Gomes Martin, Caesar Gomes Martin, around okay. their home. I walked the dog, or the dog walked me, however <laughs> you want to do it. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I started working in her restaurant, and then when I uh, graduated from University of Tampa, I wound up at Johnson & Wales and got in a master's program, and uh, you know, just my career took off. Uh, the rest is history, as you say. <laughs> as you say. I wound up back in Ybor City, and since we've opened up. Uh, you yeah, back. Yeah, Brian yeah, brought me back, which is home. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. It, it's home. As I was saying, my great-grandpa was one of the original bartenders at the Columbia Red Wow. This uh, particular dining room is the first place that my grandparents ever danced. That's my so cool. maternal grandparents. So Green Iguana, and then was this next? And then uh, and Bernini, and then Carne, okay. about four years ago. Okay. And then two years ago, we opened the Mexican place across the street, Tequilas. Okay, so you got it covered now. Uh, ethnic food does very well in Ybor City, so. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> the melting pot that we are, exactly. I, I love it, and it's so funny because uh, it is a lot of different ethnicities here, you've got the Spanish, the Hispanic, you have the Italians, Italians. the Greek. Greek, the Germans. Germans too. A lot of Polish. We have, we have, this is it, it. this is it, the this, melting pot basically. They, they came here and they worked in the factories rolling cigars. Gotcha. And and part of the, uh, these social clubs, the German American club, the Italian club, right. the Centro Espanol that we are in, the Cuban club, were their social organizations where they would come for medical, right. they would come for social, their, social services, their library yeah. and, 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 and education process, everything was done within the, the club. The group. Yeah. That's why this place, you can just stand, step in here and feel the history, it's incredible. Give me some of the ideas of some of the different dishes that are unique to you guys. 
You know, we wanted to uh, make sure that the steakhouse stayed affordable. It was very important for us and for the per diem. So where are you guys? In, we're we're, we're priced along uh, a Longhorn on, on the okay. Outback side, within a dollar or two of that. And then well, we try awesome. to offer this beautiful right. environment and an extensive Can't wine get that list anywhere else. And, 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 you know, first, first class service. At Carne Chop House, they are not playing when it comes to great food. They got your standards, they got onion soup, Caesar salad. Something a little unusual for a steakhouse is trout almondine, and this smells awesome, so I'm really looking forward to that. They also have poutine, gravy, and they have an egg over the top, which is cool. Also with the egg over the top, you have the chalk steak, makes a great sauce over that. And last but not least is grandma's recipe on the deviled eggs. I gotta really try those. Looking forward to great eats. Special thanks to Weston Tampa Bay where we stayed during our trip. They took great care of us. Give the Weston Tampa Bay a call for your next visit. I could have stayed there all day. I had such a great time. There's just so much to explore. And we're going to continue to explore more fun stuff a little bit closer to home right after this. This week, we're mixing it up here on I Know Jack's with a lot of flavor and spice. We started out with Cuban flavor from Ola Cafe. We visited Ybor City in Tampa. So we managed to add an international flair to the whole show on top of everything. I'm telling you, here at I Know Jack's, we love having fun. So next, we're going to take a look at what's happening in our corner of the world. Let's take a look at upcoming events in Jacksonville. It's the week of firsts and that means we have a lot of events this week. My first pick for fun things to do this week is of course the first Wednesday Art Walk which takes place 5 to 9 p.m. downtown on September 2nd. This month's Art Walk has the theme of Dog Days of Summer. There will be a lot of pet friendly vendors at Hemming Park so bring Fido. We also have a big birthday this week. St. Augustine is celebrating its 450th anniversary and is celebrating that with a big bash from September 3rd through the 8th. The party includes a street and music festival, cake cutting ceremony, historical reenactment, and fireworks. The street and music festival features live entertainment from Aaron Neville, Mavis Staples, Emmy Lou Harris, and more. St. Augustine has their Art Walk this week too, but in St. Augustine they have First Friday Art Walk on September 4th from 5 to 9 p.m. This is a self-guided tour with lots of different galleries participating, plus free Art Walk trolleys and trains provided by St. Augustine Sightseeing Trains and Old Town Trolleys throughout downtown for the whole Art Walk. The 33rd Annual Catfish Festival is coming up Labor Day weekend starting Friday night, September 4th and continuing all day Saturday, September 5th. This is one of the few festivals in the country celebrating catfish. Now, once you taste the yummy catfish served at this event, you'll understand why this festival has been going on for years. The festival opens as many festivals do, with a parade and a 5K run so you can work up an appetite and really make room for the 10,000 pounds of catfish that they'll be serving. That's it for this week's calendar. For more ideas, check out my post, Fun Things to Do in September, on iknowjacks.com. Here's a great organization that's helping veterans here on the First Coast. So, Paul, how's it going? Great, Valen. So to good you. to see you again, man. Absolutely. And to be out here on the beach with you. Feels like old times, brother. Definitely. I'm so stoked. So tell me a little bit what's going on here. We're out here on the beach for the Surf Warrior Program, which is a partnership between the Florida Surfing Association, United States Surfing Federation, and the Wonder Warrior Project that's actually headquartered here in Jacksonville. And this is our first day of the summer program where we introduce the sport of surfing to many of the veterans. They come out and just test the water, so to speak, see what surfing's like, see if they like it or not. And then of these about 50 people that are out today, 
about 20 are going to go into an eight-week training program where they'll actually learn to become independent, surf on their own, and be competitors and compete at our big championships in October at the south side of the pier in Jacksonville Beach. It's been such an amazing day. The surf's just perfect for them, like two foot, maybe a little three footer coming in. So they get a, just a real nice taste of it. And uh, I, I saw it myself. They were just so stoked out there. It was amazing. How's it make you feel uh, doing this for these guys? Um, it feels good doing it. I mean, they sacrificed everything for us. And I've been doing it for four years now, and I've known a lot of the guys for about four years. So every year I just come back, surf with my friends, hang out, and it's just a good day every time. Have you seen any huge, huge arc in anyone where we're like four years ago, you know, uh, they were just learning how to surf, and now it's a completely different story? Um, Felix, he's out there somewhere. Felix started out as one of our warriors, and now he's out today out here pushing people in. The tracks program here and at the Wonder Warrior Project is all about mind, body, spirit. And here with the surfing program, our mission really is to help develop self-esteem, self-confidence, and to give them those tools to be able to handle and deal with life. And it's just awesome that all these volunteers come out. They're very experienced, great instructors with huge hearts. They come out and work with the veterans and teach them how to surf. You can get more information by visiting floridasurfing.org or surfusa.org. Of course, you know, you can give a shout out to the Wounded Warrior Project also. All right, well, my name is Balen Hewitt, and I'm out here in Jacksonville Beach with my good buddy, Paul West. Thank you so much for everything. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight. I really enjoy the show. How about you? <laughs> Let me know what you think because I'm always looking for ways that I can improve the show for you. Also, don't forget to check out my daily videos online. I upload a new one every weekday and I do upload the I Know Jack's calendar every Monday to make it easier for you too. How about that? Here at I Know Jack's, we have big plans for the fall season. So make sure to keep up with us in social media or sign up for our newsletter. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. I'll be back with another episode next week, and until then, I'll see you on the internet.